All right, I don't even know where to begin, but I know that I want to make this vlog. As you know, last week I had guests from America, Keith. You know him because he was in my previous video and we talked about his first culture shocks. It, I think it's a very interesting video. If you haven't watched it, go watch it now. And I had two guests from Japan, a couple. She is Italian, she's from Kyoto, and he is from Osaka, living in Tokyo. But it was his first time here in Italy. As you can imagine, I was super busy. I had so many things to do. I did shoot things, but I didn't vlog the whole day. So today I'm trying hard to make this video because I want to show you the highlights of our week and I want to talk about some cultural differences, mainly for Aki, Japanese culture shock. So first, because we're Italian and we love food, here is a compilation of foods that we tried during that week. I'm sorry if this vlog is a little disconnected, but I hope you will let me know. It's still good. Keith, you're gonna try pizza al taglio. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think pizza al taglio is even better than a round pizza, personally. It's more fun. You like it? I love pizza al taglio. If I have pizza, probably like at least 60% of the time it's pizza al taglio. Then of course, I bought, especially for our guests, because I don't eat, I'm sorry, but I don't eat cookies in general, but for our guests, I bought so many breakfast cookies. Because in America or Japan, they don't have this culture of breakfast cookies. You find American style cookies, like the big soft ones, they're more of a like a, a snack, an afternoon snack or a dessert or they have something similar hard but it's still not a breakfast cookie so I bought pandistelle, gocciole, a lot of stuff here okay we're all sleepy and everything but he was trying gocciole for the first time I was like we need to film this yeah. but we're not ready to be filmed what do you think about gocciole? I know Italians really feel strongly about it. They're good, tastes like a chocolate chip cookie when you, when you dunk it in the milk. So you like it even though you don't like chocolate? chocolate? Even though I don't like chocolate, I do like the gocciole. Wow, he hasn't tried the plum cake yet. You mean plum cake? Plum cake, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the real pronunciation, plum cake. Plum cake, plum cake. And Aki had his first aperitivo in Italy. This is not your first aperitivo, no, but no. that's his first. Very tasty. Tutto a mai. Tanto when you do No, no. <laughs> Stracciatella. <laughs> mm. So, now I'm going to go to the next one. Okay. But, can't. Oh, no. No, no. San Pietro. San Pietro, San Pietro. And yours? Between the Pantheon and the Altare della Patria. Pantheon and Altare della Altare della Patria. It's surprisingly that. good. For you in Rome? Uh, Colosseo. Colosseo, oh wow. <laughs> this makes me happy. It was successful. You know, one thing I loved about my Japanese guest is that he loves food. He's a foodie. He's a sushi chef, a real sushi chef, so he's an expert. I could tell that every time he was eating something, he would study, like examine the food. In general, that's very Japanese to care about the detail and look at all the small things, but because he's a sushi chef, it was even more so. Everything he had, he was like, Oishi! Oh my! Mm. Oishi! He loved everything and he said that we have some interesting combinations. For example, once we had stracciatella with little like anchovies and he was like, wow, that's interesting because usually we don't mix dairy and fish and he really liked it. And once I bought some mozzarella di bufala and he loved those. He really appreciated the Italian dairy. Your favorite Italian food okay. so far? Antonia Mozzarella or I could tell that whenever there was dairy, he was like, mm, this is amazing. And it makes sense because in Japan it's very hard to find, very expensive, so it's not the most common food. But in general, he enjoyed everything. We even had ice cream, his first Italian gelato. He loved it. Aki-san, what did you eat? Ah, gelato, please. Italian gelato, have you eaten? No, no. Let's go. What do you think about the Italian gelato? It's good. I've had a couple in my time here. Yeah, it's a new but... flavor for me, Torroncino. And what's your favorite flavor? 
Do you want to be last there? What's your favorite flavor? Sonia flavor. Oh, come on. <laughs> Usually just chocolate. I like stracciatella. I like crema. Anything you don't like? Pistachio. Keith, any flavor you don't like? Chocolato. Like your favorite flavor? Uh, pistachio. Like a real Italian? No, not You're not smart. a real Italian. Aki pistachio is. is not meant to be an ice cream. Pistachio is the best. I like pistachio. Yes, and thank I'm you. Fourth generation Italian American. So over the years, we've realized that in America there is a different concept of what's blonde and what's not. I'm definitely not blonde, and in Italy, sometimes people say that he's blonde, and I can see why. He is not blonde, and she. Maybe. Yeah, she might be blonde. Maybe on camera the color is different, but I would say that like she's blondish. I know. He made me happy because he made me feel like I was so good at picking restaurants and things to order. We even went to Aricha once and he loved the beans. This is where Brian and I got married. So tomorrow he's leaving me for the first time. I might cry, I'm gonna have to stay off camera. No. They're enjoying the Romanella. Romanella is conquering everybody. There we have mushrooms with truffle. Baby. Then we have a sort of grita with ricotta cheese. And we have a classic grita. And that's my arrabbiata. <laughs> Oh, also one thing that he said that I was like, yeah, that's so true is that usually when he goes abroad He doesn't really love foreign cuisines because some cuisines try to cover the taste of the ingredients with sauces and condiments and stuff but he was like in italy your cuisine is very simple you use few ingredients you don't put a lot of mayo and sauces and stuff on top to cover the flavor to make it more delicious it's already delicious your vegetables your ingredients they're really high quality i agree that made me feel good one thing i'm not sure he loved the italian beer he loves beer i don't so i couldn't even recommend stuff but i don't think italian beer is the best i think he tried iknusa i don't know if he loved it though and then of course we went to a lot of different places we were tourists so guys it was so hot i'm burning <laughs> oh my god it's so hot i'm chilly yeah I was about to die, but we went to, with Keith, we went to Villa d'Este. He really loved all the fountains and it was cool to show him, you know, something that is not Rome, like a little town near Rome, because we had a lot of time with him. Look, it's the passato remoto. <laughs> passato remoto. Yeah. He's practicing his passato remoto. Fascinating, the passato remoto. I'm glad you encouraged me to look at Paris, to look at this room. Hello. Brian's been replaced. You're so cute. Brian's been replaced. Okay. No, no, I can never replace you. Never no, replace. I can never replace you. No, don't run away. <laughs> Funny thing about Brian, he cannot hold an umbrella without pretending it's a baseball bat. Are you impressed? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm also <laughs> Keith, your first granita! Should I use the spoon or the straw? I don't know, you can I start with the straw, straw and then the spoon or... It's nice, huh? And with Aki and Chiara, we went to the Colosseum, the Forum, Travis Fountain, Pantheon, like so many things we were dead. But I feel like both Aki and Chiara, because Chiara is from Chioggia, and so even though she's Italian and so she's not like the main focus of my analysis, I could tell that even Chiara was impressed make me happy. I like to make believe I was alive during this time and walking these halls. You're right, I almost imagine. Sonia, what's the name of this building? Brian, this yeah. is your first time me, do you speak here. English? How can this be your first time? Because I'm not a real Roman. Oh, I'm you are Roman now. Brian. You didn't want to enter the Colosseum, but are you glad you did? Should I be honest? Yeah. Yes. Behave. Can you just act normal? Yeah, it's cool. It's not the coolest thing I've ever seen in one of I mean, it's great, but I think it's cool. In other words, I think I think the outside has a more booming effect than the inside. What are you doing? 
What have you been doing for the past two hours? What's happening? What's happening? Following the chess tournament. I've seen this stuff. Wow, how nice of you to join us, right? Keith, you now love Italian fountains, right? I love it. You're always like, oh, there's a fountain. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> Go punch Keith in the back. Oh, oh, I got the action on camera. Now I want to talk about some of Aki's culture shocks. Okay, first we went to pick them up at the airport. My, my car is small, like it's not a big, big car. It's a normal Italian car. Compared to American cars, my car is definitely small. And I asked Aki like, do you think my car is small? But he said no, because in Japan, they have our same parking problem, so they don't have big cars. But he did say that Italian cars are generally more dirty. I agree, it's true. So I washed my car for the first time in like three years, the week Aki came because I was like, no, he's Japanese, Japanese cars are so clean. They give you a fine in Japan if your car is dirty. And I was like, I need to wash my car. I actually washed it twice because in this period with the pollen and I don't know what dust, in Rome, the cars look so dirty. And so he was like, they're a little dirty, but yeah. <laughs> I think that's a little culture shock. But in general, he was so impressed with Italy. So I don't want to make it sound like he was dissing Italy. He was actually saying like all amazing things, but a few things made me laugh. Like when we went to the metro. In Rome, we do have a metro system, but it's two lines, two and a half lines compared to Tokyo or even Osaka. <laughs> and the train we got, it had no air conditioning and it was super loud. <laughs> and you couldn't see the names of the stops. We were dying. A lot of graffiti. He noticed everything and he didn't say anything at first, but I could tell that he was like just looking and I was like, <sighs> and he was even like, why do you have music uh, in your metro stations? Like, and I was like, I don't know, entertainment, but I guess, yeah, that's right. In Japan, they don't play music if you're at the metro station. Then, this was especially when we were in Rome, I could tell that he was very suspicious. Because you know how there is this stereotype, but I, would, I wish I could say it's completely a stereotype. It's not. It's true, especially compared to Japan. We have more pickpocketers, more scams, more stuff like that. And I could tell that he was a little worried and suspicious. And whenever someone would come closer to say something, ask for something, he was a little like, hmm, is this a scam? But, but people, trust me, if you live in Japan, you know that it, it's true. Italy is a little more dangerous and you have to be definitely more careful. For example, once I remember, I was looking for a parking spot in Trastevere and you know how there are those people who are like, there's a spot here, but it's nothing legal, nothing official. And I, I did want to park there because if you're from Rome, you know how difficult it is to find a parking spot in Trastevere. And so then I gave him one euro. Yes, I had to tell him that that's a sort of black mail because you don't have to but if you don't you're always worried that they might key your car or do something to your car and there's nothing you can do about it mm. one more thing it was a cultural difference you know how in japan they're usually very quiet very quiet all the time but when they go to the restaurant especially if it's a izakaya izakaya is a sort of osteria they yell at the waitress or the waiter they're like Suruzen! like to ask for anything like the the bill a beer water anything and once we were at the restaurant he was like so if i want to uh, have the the waiter's attention what should i do and we were like do not yell do not yell just like raise your hand try to make eye contact they will come oh my god i wish i had written down all the things that he said during that week because it was so interesting if you can't travel because I understand traveling is expensive and not everybody can travel. I get it. But if you have some friends who have friends who are coming from different countries, especially if they're from Asia, America, Australia, you know, far places, I'd recommend going out with them, spend some time with them because it's so much fun and it's so interesting. It makes you look at your own country with different eyes. It makes you realize how beautiful it is or how certain things that we kind of accept or maybe we shouldn't, etc. I know this video was a mess, but I hope that you still enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye. It's super hot. I'm glad Brian is enjoying his time with a fellow American. Just being American, playing catch.